It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, showbiz and beyond. Tonight, an actress and reality star who was always destined for the spotlight. Daniela Westbrook began modelling at the age of seven before entering the famous Sylvia Young Theatre School, aged eight. Following a string of TV appearances as a child, one school bully demonstrated their jealousy by cutting off her hair, an early taste of the price of fame. And at the age of 16, everything went up a level when she landed the role of Sam Mitchell, the younger sister of Phil and Grant Mitchell in EastEnders. There followed numerous acting roles and even a stint on reality TV in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Dancing on Ice and Celebrity Big Brother. But Daniela is as well known for some of her off-screen problems, including a well-reported addiction to drugs. However, ever the survivor, Danielle has bounced back. From these problems, uh, she has uh, overcome so much, even a brush with cancer, and is now looking to the future with plans to be a holistic therapist. But could she even return to our TV screens or Albert Square? I'm delighted to say that Daniela Westbrook joins me now. Hi, Daniela. Oh, Mark, I love you. That was so nice. Thank you. Well, listen, we had great fun researching your career today. Oh, God. You've done so much. You started... So much off screen as well as on Well, yeah, but look, I, I mean, you were, you were a huge entertainer, a natural performer. Uh -huh. um, when did you first realise there was something of the performer about you? Um, I think when I used to throw loads of sickies from school and I could get around my mum, I can get around anybody, so yeah. Right, so you could basically pretend to be ill, so that was your yeah, first acting role. Yeah, my first role, acting role was I didn't like to go and do PE and stuff, so I was like, I'm not going into that, I used to pretend I was sick. And were you a bit of a show-off as well when you were little? Yeah, I've always been a bit of a show-off, I'm still a bit of a show-off, but yeah, I think I was, yeah. Was it like enjoying attention? Is that something you Yeah, I think all enjoyed? kids did, and um, yeah. I think all kids do one way or another, they'll get attention, good, bad or indifferent, but yeah. yeah. I think so, yeah. And, and a pretty sort of happy, normal childhood, really. Yeah, I had a great time, really, but pretty much. Um, I did suffer some child abuse and stuff when I got into the industry, but other than mm. that, my home life was fantastic. Yeah, and so getting into acting lessons at the age of eight, what did that do for you? I loved it. It was escapism, I think, because mm. I was bullied really badly in my primary school. Um, I had my hair cut off and everything, like you said. Yeah. But actually by my second cousin, funny enough. Um but that's just kids. I think kids, all kids go through some form of bullying one way or another. And um, my mum was very clever because she put me into a lot of outdoor activities away from school. So I had friends in different groups of children, not just uh, not just my peers at school. Mm. So I had other children, you know, to turn to, which was great because I, it meant I had escapism from being bullied. And in the years leading up to EastEnders, you got plenty of work as a model and an actress. Yeah, I did. I did loads of work. In fact, I, we launched um, Next... Yeah. Kids stuff, Emma Bunton and I, and did all lots of stuff and fashion shows. I did loads and loads of stuff. When I was, was this, was this before the Spice Girls? Oh, good, you were yeah. working Emma with Emma was Bunton. At oh, Emma was two years below me at school. Amazing. Yeah, so that was well before that. I think she was a probably, because her and her little brother PJ did it oh, with the launch of Next and the fashion show. We did it mm -hmm. in Kensington, the first ever flagship store. And myself and my little brother did it. Did it surprise you to see Emma become a Spice Girl and, and no, world famous? No, she literally just left school and I still speak to Emma and... I'm so proud of her. She's done so well. And she's still exactly the same girl she was at school. Yeah. Did you think she always had that talent to go yeah, that far? always. Always mm. just had the... Uh, in fact, it was always us girls at school that wasn't as popular with, within the school shows and like, wasn't the yeah. favourites in school that went on and done really, done really well in life. And why were you bullied at school, Danny? No, I wasn't bullied at Sylvia Young. She would not tolerate no, bullying just reg at regular school. school you were? At, at normal school, at primary school, because what, I used to be in commercials and TV. So and was it jealousy? I just think, yeah, I think so. And also you were... Obviously, a very pretty little girl, so they I would just, have been jealous. No, I'm yeah? not really that. I just think I was a bit of a dreamer and I was a bit awkward. And mm. you know, I think now we've got. Uh, I was dyslexic and stuff as well. We didn't really know much about that mm. in the late seventies, early eighties. And um, I think back then it was just very different. We didn't, you know, diagnose things as differently. And I was just, I just stood out a bit differently. I was a bit socially awkward, um, and so to hide that, I think mask that, I become very extrovert. Why do you think you were socially awkward? Was it just your nature? Yeah, I think so. I think because my parents were like just. Cool. They were just normal, cool people, and like, I've never never hid anything from my family or my mm. parents. were just very close people, and I've had a really nice upbringing. Other people weren't brought up like that. Mm. You know, my mum was really beautiful, and is still today a very beautiful woman and, like, to look at, and people, other girl, kids at school were just jealous. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And all that performing in your teens. I loved it. Was it a buzz? It was the time of my life being at yeah. Sylvia Young's, and there's still a very, very, very close network. I saw a friend of mine stay from Sylvia's that I've known for 30-odd years. 
uh, when I met today. But they're still some of my closest friends. So you were eight when you went in. How old I were you? I was nine, actually, when nine. I was Sylvia Young. Yeah. Okay. And how old were you when you came out of Sylvia Young Theatre 16. School? Sixteen. Yeah, I, I did my full-time school. So was it a home from time. home? I loved it. I just yeah. loved it. And it's like the best years of my life. Um, what about being a child star and acting... As, as a young person making money, it's fantastic. W- was that, was it, were there any downsides to that? Was it premature um, at all? Other than other than the addiction side of it, no, it wasn't at all. Mm. Because I still, England was very different then, and London was very different. We had three channels. Channel Four had just launched, mm. and we didn't have all these, you know, there were satellite TV channels and stuff like that. I'm very old, people. Anyone watching? I'm, Not that but, old. Um, no, well, you're the same age now. Yeah, and, that's uh, right. <laughs> yeah, just, you're, we're, we're the same vintage, aren't we? We are yeah. very like we are. There you go. But, um, Let's call it mid seventies, yeah. shall we? Yeah. No, early, early. early so I've got to go mid then. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to airbrush it a little bit. Yeah, 74. On. I don't bother airbrushing anything anymore. <laughs> like this. But um, no, it was just, I, I just had a great time. And I think, you know, we, I grew up in front of the nation mm. um, in a great opportunity working for, you know, BBC. And it was wonderful. And then that, it's just really, that show really is, is you know, that was a tiny, really bit of my life. I, I just got, went on to meet and work with lots of people away from that programme, like, Worldwide, and it was about I worked with Freddie Mercury, lots of different people, and Andrew Webb Webber, so many people. I've Tell me with. about working with Freddie. What, what were you doing Wonderful. with Freddie? I did a video from the Invisible Man video. Amazing. Photo shoot, and um, yeah, Brian May and the guys, and, and it was fun. We had a great day. It was just wonderful. And it's now I look and like my son went to me about three years ago. Did you do a video for Queen when you was a kid? I was like, yeah. He said someone sent it to me on Facebook, and I didn't believe them. I was like, I never knew my mum. You did that. I was like, well, I did do it when I was like thirteen, I think. And what was Freddie like in the flesh? It was wonderful. And I remember that day I had a, an abscess and one of them was actually a dentist. And um, they're saying what was wrong with me and they got me somebody onto, onto set to help my... One of Queen is a dentist, yeah, is that right? One of Queen That's is actually a qualified amazing. dentist. And Brian May is, I think, a, an astrophysicist or something. Yeah, I think it was the, the other guy with the grey hair. John nice. Deacon? Yeah, really nice guy. Amazing. He said exactly what was wrong with me and they brought a dentist onto set for me. To, yeah, to numb my tooth and everything. And then you land the big role, EastEnders. Yeah, I did quite a lot before that. I did the London programme. Of Grange, Hill, Grange Hill? I did Grange Hill. Um, I worked in the West End of Angela Webber for Tim Rice. Oh, what so did you I did do with them? West End. Um, I did Joseph in the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat in London nice. um, at the Royalty Theatre. And did you, Hall. like, have a direct encounter with Lloyd Webber himself? Yeah, they, we, we did one of the one of the first... With Mike Holloway, it was fantastic, Joseph, actually. Um, I've done quite a lot in the West End. I used to do all the role varieties, the Palladium and everything. So that's something I really want to look to go back to later this year. I'm just opened a production company, actually, and making a lot of TV and stuff. But I want to go back to theatre. I want to go back to real... If I'm going to go back and act, I want to go back to real acting. And that would have been... You've got learned that at Sylvia Young, which is acting, singing, singing dancing, and acting, dancing. Yeah. The whole yeah, thing. Classical the, dance. The whole and yeah. And, and, and what was the input of Andrew Lloyd Webber like? I mean, was he a hands-on sort of um, He was wonderful. Producer? He was such a polite man, you know, such a mm. wonderful guy. And such a, and Did he see something in you? Did you feel stuff. guided by I, him? I worked on that show myself, Denise Van Outen, um, Kelly Bright, uh, quite a few of us, actually, that have gone on to, and worked. Mm. We was all at Sylvia Young's together and um, loads of people. And Natalie and Nicole Appleton, uh, Emma Bunsen. Was all in what what do you feel you learned from Lloyd Webber? What was, what I was his? Huge Christ Superstar as well for them. Um, Unbelievable. I just, I just think he was just a wonderful man. It was just, you know, we knew who he was, obviously, because we brought up a lot of theatre, mm. being at Sylvia Young's, it was just like an idol for us. Oh, this guy's, the, he's, he's God, yeah, isn't he? He is the God of the theatre, him and Tim Rice, you know, yeah. a, a, a God's the theatre. And for me, just now I look back and think, oh, I wish I'd have done... In a way, I sort of wish I hadn't gone into telly and wish I'd done more theatre, because mm. I'd, I don't get this... I love doing TV, but I don't get the same buzz as I do with a live audience for theatre. And the problem is, a show like EastEnders, obviously a great break for a 16-year-old, but it's a treadmill, isn't it? It's hard work, especially now, I think, because uh, like when the last time I, I worked on a soap, whether it be, and I've done a few soaps now, um, I think they all run the same sort of tight ship and there's a lot of, a lot of episodes and you're knocking out a lot of work yeah. very fast. And I just think for me, going to do theatre or to do just a drama or, you know, even with presenting, I've done a lot of live presenting with open talk, like that's more of a buzz for me. Yeah, I just I don't really want to just be churning out. So actually, being in a kind of long running soap opera didn't necessarily suit your personality. It it does and it doesn't. I mean, I think if you had a great character to build on with with the characters I played in soaps, they've both been like sort of a bit 
you know, but two, that, two what I, no, 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 a bit what I would call a buffer. You've got your main characters in mm. within the family, the hierarchies yeah. like the Peggy's and everything else, and then you've got people like Ronnie, like, like Ronnie and Roxy, and that, but like me, Roxy, Billy, we're we're padders. Mm. Well, not me anymore. So making but up the numbers slightly, up not the numbers not the central, family, but you're central getting the, the drama. storyline, but you're just there to fill in the, the gaps mm. a little bit yeah. with those characters. But you'll never be, and I'm happy to be that person. Mm. You know, but and some people are happy to just go there and pick up a wage and do that, but that's really just not for me. There, there you go. I did have a lot of fun with Patsy, but well, yeah. Tell, tell me about tell me about uh, friends you made. In I've made a lot of friends. Can you remember the, shooting that scene? I remember it was early on a Friday morning. We did that about half seven on a Friday morning. Was, like good fun. was that before Friday you had morning. your breakfast? Yeah, uh, yeah. And by that the way, look at that hair. Look that's at that my hair, gorgeous mane of hair which you still that got. That's mine. That was my all my blonde hair. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked with great, uh, wonderful Timothy Spall. I did three years at ITV with Timothy Spall and Leslie Sharp yeah. doing Frank Stubbs. I've done loads of yeah. different work and worked with some wonderful people, and I've been very, very lucky. I mean, EastEnders was, I guess, the most high-profile thing you did. Mm. Was the, it was, I mean, it had Maybe. many more viewers than it boasts now. Right? Well, it was yeah, one but of it was easy. Shows. It was only three channels then. Yeah, cool. So it's easy to get 26 million. Did it, did it change your watch. life? I mean, did, did that sure. part change your life? Um yeah, I, yeah, because it, it launched me into people's front rooms mm. three times a week, and especially on a Sunday afternoon. And, and was it a positive development uh, just for you personally? How could it not be? I mean, you, you made money. Experience. You became, it was obviously great for your career, but what about you as a human being? Was it good I for you? Uh, any child at 16 that's earning, you know, probably three, four hundred grand a year, it's a lot of money for a 16 year old. Did you say three or four hundred grand a year? <laughs> yeah, with, with, with stuff that I've earned. Is that right? Way, age yeah. 16? Well, yeah, probably around where you were. Did now, that's when back in the day when, when half a million a year was a lot we of money. Got, we got taken, we went to New York and did, they had, they had a Wolf of Gazette in New York. They used to be obsessed with it. In fact, Whoopi Goldberg went on onto a show a while ago and said that it's her favourite soap, and that, but the Sam Mitchell was one of her favourite characters. And I, I was just nearly fell off my chair watching that on the daytime slow TV show. But yeah, it was great, but it's done, it's sort of done, and I'm, I'm nearly, you know, I'll be 50 next year, and I'm. I do want to do some theatre. I want to play Mama in Chicago on tour. Will you, few things I will want the to industry do. let you reinvent yourself like that? Do you feel typecast by EastEnders and also all of the no, kind I'd of never, tabloid never stuff? That. No, not at all, because that's just part of life, isn't it? Do you it's feel like, taken seriously, though, given your talents and given I your experience? I am or I'm not. You know why? Because being in recovery, it's not my... It's not my business to write about other people's opinions. If I'm not, I do other things. I have other mm. strings to my bow. Now I make television as well. Do you, do you a lot of people don't even know that, that you're I'm a part of that you're production. a producer. Yeah, a lot of people don't even know that I'm part of that production company. So I get, I work for people that won't give me a job, but I'll, I'll make TV programs from them. They don't even know I own the, we, we, we make the company. So either way, you win. Yeah, so I'm winning either way, so it's good for me. But, but do, you, do you detect snobbery about you, or do you t detect I being prejudged? Because sometimes people's snobbery comes from their own insecurity. Yeah their own level of insecurity, their own level of unprofessionalism. And that, to me, isn't my problem, it's their problem. And do you feel that opportunities are there for you? Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of things I actually do turn down because at the moment I'm, I'm writing, I'm self-writing my third book and I've got surgery and stuff to do and we are busy with stuff that we've got in pre-production and, and things. And I actually, for the first time in my life, can sit back and be in a position to say no to things, and it's wonderful. That's just brilliant. Well, look, I want to see you in the West End on I stage, see you singing anytime, and Mark. dancing. You can always sing and dance on GB News if you like. Oh, no, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight. Not but tonight. but uh, can I ask you about something you mentioned just earlier? And it was mm -hmm. about in your teens, you were one of the faces of Next, and you had modelling contracts, TV appearances, and that's when you first mentioned the word addiction. So did it did it start in your teens? Um, yeah, a, a, a drug abuse started well before I started EastEnders. It had nothing to do with being so famous. So 13, 14, yeah, 15? Yeah, it was already there. It was already, it was already in and, my problem. And what, why do you feel it happened to you? Um, probably because of the, 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 the abuse that was going on within the industry. It's no, you know, it's no, you know, the yeah. nutrient stuff. Everyone knows that I'm, I've been part of that and... I was abused as a kid through stuff, and most people in the industry have been. So you were, but it's you been stamped were out, sexually so. abused it, uh, Quite a bit, within yeah, the entertainment sure. industry yeah. by figures in British TV or entertainment? Yes. It's been already, already been public spoken uh, about. And was justice them. achieved for, for you? Um, I, I'm really not a liberty to talk about, but yeah. yeah, it has been, and I've managed to move yeah. on quite a lot with a lot of my life. And I, I think for me, you know, that's not just one part of... I don't blame my addiction on that. It was where I was introduced to drugs, but it wasn't my problem with drugs. I am mm. a drug addict. Uh, well, not, I'm a recovery drug addict today, but I'm, I'm, I have an addiction problem, whether it be coffee or whatever. It could be anything. When you're an addict, you're an addict. An all or nothing That's type it, person. Of course. So it wasn't being famous. I can't put my issues down to being famous or being abused. The reasons why I did it. It was that 
that was the baton I took up and that's what I went with. If you were an accountant, would you have been an accountant that got addicted to drugs? No, I probably would have been an accountant who got addicted to money and my parents would have been a lot happier with that. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I would have been too. But now yeah. that's But I guess you're in, a, you're in a world where drugs were readily available. I or... think they are everywhere in the world, isn't they? Yeah. Not? And if you're, you know, you know, it's like people that are addicted to gambling or whatever. Everyone's got a problem with something. Yeah. You know, some people are addicted to social media and the internet and, you know, some people are addicted to, to stocks and shit. Everything. It could be anything. Yeah. I want to get to all the positives in a second. Uh, I was deeply concerned reading about your health issues back in the day. We know about that photograph. When, yeah. I mean, tell me about that photograph. Was it that real? Guy, was that it true? That guy a plane, that photograph, the guy that took it. It was a midget and, you know, he got the best shot of the night. But it, what, what happened? And, and I, don't, I don't want to dwell on this because for it's me, really your, your boring, story is, is a good news story and I don't want <laughs> it to really define boring, you. But though. I feel my audience will want me to ask you about it because you, ask me. you, you got involved in cocaine and your, your nose was damaged as a result of taking cocaine. Is yeah, that right? Was. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a car accident. It was about that. But to be perfectly honest, I'm so bored of talking about I it because you. I've um, I had 20 years of it now. So, yeah. you know, and I've got past it. And then I just think I only really speak about it within meetings and to give service because yeah. within the 12 step program, because you just you can't keep something if you don't give it away. So if you don't share your story within that, but on a news story like this, there's people at home who are just sick of hearing about it, banging on about it. Well, no, and, I, and I, I acknowledge that. And I, I think that, you know, it's me that's asking rather than you, you know, you, very much for me, your story is one of survival yeah, and of, of great creativity. You look incredible. And by the way, you look very beautiful. And you've obviously got a good plastic surgeon as well. Um, no, I'm getting really fantastic. And all fair play to Aintree a- Hospital. I'm under a great yeah. team of surgeons there that are rebuilding all my face. I'm having a bone operation next month. Really? Brilliant. And you're, you're being very blunt, your nose looks great. No, it doesn't. It's twisted that way. It looks terrible on oh, camera. No, I hate no, no. it. You, but, um, you look fab. But I'm getting you there. Walked and in, you know you what? Walked I'm into healthy. Our, our I'm studio. healthy today and I, I'm, I'm happy for that. Well, yeah, I've seen pictures of you recently and we've worked together before. We're pals. But when you walked in, I was just so happy to see how well you look. Do you know what? I'm happy today that I'm, I'm okay and that mm. I'm, you know, you live for the moment, you live for the day and... Just for today, I'm okay, and that's So you, you take it on a day-to-day basis, and that that's is my that's recovery. the key thing. Like I don't put my recovery first. I don't have a life. I don't have my yeah. children, don't have a mother, and, you know, and that's just the way my, my parents will have a daughter. And now look at you. Picture of health, right? Your yeah, body's and, you know, I've got 14 years before clean, and, and I relapsed, so I will never, ever in my life take that for granted again and take, yeah. and never say never again, because I will never, ever just take it as a, yeah, I'm clean, and that's fine. I will always say, I am today, I'm a recovered addict. It's, it's a phenomenal achievement. I mean, 14 years is incredible. That was then, and then I went and relapsed. But now I go back and I think, why did I throw that away? And I, I look at it But today. maybe that makes your resolve stronger, the brief I relapse. I don't Perhaps know. It I, just, I don't know, but because I, I beat myself up about it a lot. Um, but I'm glad I did, because that means um, it means that I care about well, my life. And also perhaps it was just a reminder, you know, it's like, no, well, you, you my, my think you've got this. My kids didn't need to go through that, and my mm. family, and I didn't, and, and publicly people don't want to listen. People are bored of hearing it, and I'm bored of hearing it. And I personally, I, if it was me, I'd be sat at home thinking, I don't want to hear about this girl. She had that many chances. Why don't she just go away? And I would feel exactly the same. Well, um, I think that's a bit harsh, you know. I think no, it's, it's very No, it's not at all, because there's no? people out there, you know, we're, we're at war, and there's people out there that, are, you know... Mm. I've got real problems going on in their life, and I'm, I do sit in a very privileged position. And if I can't get my crap together, then somebody needs to give me a good shake. So that's and really it's been, where I was at. You've, you've been clean now for a long time, haven't you? I've done quite well. Yeah, I've done really well. And I just, and do you know what I've done this time? I do a lot of law attraction. I don't talk about clean time because it plays like a trigger in my yeah. head. Yeah, and, it, and years it shouldn't before. be like a stopwatch. Yeah, I don't want to be worrying about picking a key ring up at a meeting. That's great as it is. I just do today, 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 That's today, amazing. and I just have goals. So I reach I think goals. We, we can all learn from that, which is brilliant. Uh, what about Albert Square? Any chance oh, of a return? God, no, no, probably not talk about that. No, you don't. I'm so RIP. I think, I, 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 do you know what? I think you've got bigger fish to fry, haven't you? I'm just, you know what? I love... Would you I do another soap, there? Would you do Corrie? Or, do or, or um, Corrie. I'd Emmerdale. love to do Emmerdale Corrie. Um, that would be a, yeah, I would. That'd be a great message to the Beeb, wouldn't it? Not really, because I'm an actor and that's what we do. Mm. It's like you as a talk radio and, and talk sport and everything, and then, yeah. and then you come over here. It's just, it's what people do. We evolve. Yeah. You know, and I'm happy for the show that, that, that Kim's gone back and she's taking it to another level. I got a second chance to do it. Why shouldn't she? And I just think it's wonderful. I just hope people don't give her a hard time and that she has a great time and she makes the most of it. Well, I think it's great because you, as I say, have got so many other roles to sink your teeth into. And you're quite interested in the body as well, the holistic thing. Tell I me love about the that. holistic thing, but I think as you're going to be a older, therapist. I've been training to do my therapy, drug and alcohol therapy. Yeah. As well, but um, yeah, I'm just into. Do you know what? I'm just into this whole new moon, the, the moon cycles, and I think mm. as you get older, you become a little bit more inquisitive to what's out there. Yeah. And um, 
about how to keep yourself well, I think. Yeah. You know, because you can never really invest too much in, in your health, can you? You can't. And there are so many people going through a tough time. We've just had Hugely. lockdown. Hugely. Really, really tough for mental health. You've talked very honestly about yeah, your I mental struggled health. struggled with it with lockdown as well. well. Did you struggle in lockdown? Yeah, I did, because I really thought... Um, I struggled not with lockdown. Coming out of lockdown, I don't like to see... Now I can go... I was just saying, actually, somebody mm. in, in, lo- in the lobby that was talking about different things, and... I said, do you know what, where I live up in the Dales, I'm like, if I don't decide to get in the car and go to the gym or go out, I might go 10 days and not see anybody, yeah. apart from my dogs. But that's of choice. And I think with lockdown, I came out of lockdown, and I was like, I actually don't really, I'm not bothered about going on a holiday or um, seeing people or socialising too much. Yeah. So, because I actually really like my space, and it actually taught me again to like the outdoors and appreciate different things and appreciate my time alone as well. And there are people who'll be watching who maybe have issues around addiction. Um, what would you say to them? What, what have you learned? What would the message be to anyone that's struggling at the moment? Um, for me, the message is get to a meeting and, and just get a sponsor, get a 12-step programme underneath you and, mm. and just get in there and do it. And don't feel like you're embarrassed or ashamed because it's already in somebody in the seat either side of you that's done exactly the same, if not worse. You know, and that's not to say that you're not good enough to mm. go into a meeting, you're not that far gone. Just get yourself to a meeting, get online. There's online. If you can't... If you can't bring yourself to go and sit in a meeting and get yourself one on Zoom, you don't even have to put your picture up. It's an anonymous programme. Just get yourself to a meeting and get, just get recovery in, into you and you'll see that there's a whole new way of life and it, and it is possible we do recover.